Welcome back steam fans. Today we're at the Heron Pond Farm to learn more about steam sterilization from the man himself, Andre Contelmo. Stay tuned. Hey folks, I'm gonna go and um, turn on the steamer. It's gonna take a little while to come up the temp and take it a little like how I do it, why I do it type thing. And um, and then when the steamer gets up the temp, we'll go over like how to cover a certain area and and that whole that whole shebang. So a little out of time. So you wanna walk down, uh, yeah, walk down to the steamer and we'll give it we'll give it a once over. This machine, we just, this is our first year of operation with this particular machine. We were using a machine about half the size or less. Yep. Um, and um, that's how I met John is John saw me proselytizing steam around like with with this older unit and uh you know um showed me what we could do about doing it even better and getting involved and so um heron pond farm has been using a steamer about 12 years now we got into it um how many before i get way into it how many have already seen like the steam presentation that i normally give one two three four five six okay so um about half here the um, we got into it because um, you know the chick we just was taking over everything, and uh, it just became you know like we we were either growing chickweed or nothing. As we'll go through, and I'll show you what what happens when you try this. But the the way to do this that is pretty cost effective, except that it takes a whole bunch of time, is prep all your beds and um, get it to the right moisture, and then um, and then tarp it and close up everything tight as a drum and walk away and um and it takes three to four weeks for that to work and what you're really doing is germinating the weeds and then they grow and smother under there and they'll only do that to a certain depth so the process we'll go through the whole process but just to brief you like when you're getting ready to kill something kill the weeds either that way or with steam everything has to be done because you don't want to stir the pot again because then you'll be bringing up stuff. Now we're in shallow production. I know that you guys are introduced for like more disease, I think because of the tomatoes and stuff. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but this is for um, shallow, um, we, like the, the, the chickweed, which is my main thing. They cannot germinate after two, two inches of soil. Um, also a lot of the brassicas are that way too. And those are my weeds in here. If I was trying to get rid of nut sedge and something like that, you know, you're talking about needing to be down 10 inches of soil to get into that stuff. Um, but this is just a two inch application for me. So what we do is we have the whole thing prepped and you can come over and, and check it out. And we're going to turn on the steamer to start making the steam, but this sock that runs down it, you can. Um, before I turn it on, you all can come on in and take a peek at it and see that it's got grommets in it. And this is a new style sock that Sue sent to us. If you go in here and see, um, this is a canvas sock. And then there's these grommet holes every so often in the sock. You know, of course, it's in the middle of this bed, which looks just like this, down the length. That side is already chained off. And then we'll pull this back over. But I want you guys to see this steam tube in action. So that's why we're gonna start it up and let the uh, steamer get going. And we won't cover it until, um, until you can see, you know, the, like just basically the, the th it's pretty good to understand what's happening underneath. As you can see, the little tomato plants already, they're already having a good, they're already like, yeah, we'll come back. Um, this was just prepped, you know, four or five days ago. And so the weeds will just come up in here um, not much chickweed left in this house because we steam it every year. Um, now we, um, we do it because we get such increase in our yields. We'll turn this on, which I just want to make sure everything that says hot means real hot. Just yeah. so, okay. Um, <laughs> this is a dream come true for me because compared to <laughs> my other steamer is like, doesn't have any controls on it. It's like plug it in and it's supposed to work. But these guys like all the breakers, everything on it. It's just a regular Becca burner. You turn it on, 
I'm gonna go through its like little safety things and make sure is that every everything is on. And then, I mean, it just sounds like one of your greenhouse furnaces running after a little while. I mean, just starts up and goes. You see how it more evenly distributes the steam? Then yeah. that other sock kind of bleeds, you know? Yeah. So it's out of the grommets and the steam. Well, it comes out of the canvas too, I think, when it really gets going. But it's going out of the grommets first because they're easy. Yeah. And so it actually is going all the way down. And so what I do, because I can't see, is um, I've got my stakes under here um, where, the, where the thing is. The stakes are right here. And I just take my bucket and I put it where the stakes are and I lay it down. And then I'll ask John to do the same. If you can lay that, uh, that one of those trays right where the, right where the, between the stakes so I know where I'm going, that'd be excellent. It took me an embarrassingly long period of time to come up with this chain system. And I was like moving chains and and it was heavy and hard, but it, it's not. It's basically, when I'm done, I, will, I put them into the bucket, and when I want to go, I just, I'm out of the bucket. <laughs> and then, I lay it down, and to make sure I get a good seal, I walk on the chain, it kind of crushes into the ground. I did this so many different ways. I've done this with T-posts, uh, and everything trying to get it to work. This is so simple. Um, so I've only been doing it this way for probably like seven years, <laughs> but all the other years I was doing it. And then I had like little pieces of, ch I don't know. It was like, definitely, I was working harder, not smarter. Yeah, so we'll just turn this back on and. Um, now after it gets going, it won't, yeah, flap like that. So you see it tense up pretty quickly. Um, I don't find it. A lot of farmers feel like it needs to tent up like this to work. And I don't think it actually does. Because I've had it work fine when it doesn't become a tent. But if it's a tent, then everything is getting steam and the pressure of the atmospheric pressure is pushing the steam into the soil. So. You just basically have a hot air balloon that you anchor to the ground, is essentially what we have. You should be able to do a space. We did this for a demonstration, but like my experience is to do two beds at a shot of this. And the reason my beds are shut up this way is that this house, like I said, is for Salanova. It's one of the only houses I don't mechanically harvest, although I'm designing a harvester with TerraTech that will do that. Um, so. My staff wants to be able to straddle. And because I mechanically harvest everything else, the beds are as wide as my harvester. Even though you've got the chickweed under control in there, you're still steaming for <clears throat> salanova because of the increased yield? Oh yeah, I started winter farming, I don't know, 15 years ago. Um, so um, when I first started farming, I mean like I, 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 everything I threw in the ground for the winter was like, it just grew and I was, I was great and like I'm a hero. And then I, every, every year after year five, I just have, kept on having more and more problems. And one of the problems that we had with the Salanova crop was we get a cut out of it and then we start getting, we cut, my crew was calling it sudden death syndrome. Um, like, but it's, it's um, you know, it's like, you know, there was like Pythium opportunistic fungi in the soil and they were like, you know, rotting out. Um, and I would have these bald spots in my Salanova patch. And I'd be like, what the hell? But when I started steaming the Salanova houses before transplanting, which is what this house is going to be, um, two things happened. One, I didn't see that death anymore. Nothing died. And two, the time period between first and second cut went down. And so, and overall, we used to get three cuts out of our Salanova 
over the winter and now we're good for a fourth or fifth cut and the reason is that those fourth and fifth cuts you could get the salanova to grow big enough that you would cut it but like you and your family would eat it but you can't sell it you know what i'm saying so this is producing a fourth and fifth cut that is actually marketable a marketable fourth and fifth cut and that helped me out because some of these houses like in my rotation or something i'll delay and so then i will have something in april because i can't plant anything early enough to have it april 1st well i can plant a few things but you know then having those late cuts of sound over spinach as well i mean the the number of cuts on the spinach is so much i mean my all-time record is thirty-two thousand dollars of spinach out of a house in a winter um that was an exceptional year but i can't do that without without steaming but i'm regularly in the 20s out of a house that size and that's by the number of cuts and it's all it's all highly marketable stuff the one thing that I have found, and um, Trevor at Brookdale has them really cheap, these um, soil, mo uh, it's a tensometer. You don't want like one of those electronic soil moisture meters because they're garbage and they don't really work. But the tensometers, he's got relatively inexpensive. And we do sometimes have to irrigate to get to the right moisture before we steam. Because sometimes if we've cut off irrigation, taking us a long time, the soil is very dry and just like when you see if you're trying to wet a potting mix or water a crop that you know the top is really dry soil is hydrophilic at first or hydrophobic and so you're repelling the water so the steam doesn't penetrate in bone dry soil systems as well but if you over wet it then you're relying on the steam to raise the temperature and so, you know, we pay attention to the soil more. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 a, that's a stumbling block that you could stumble on if you didn't know. Um, so I just go down, you know, a little two inches. And so this is at 180 right here. I'll probably run it for at least another 20 minutes because if it's at 180, it probably just got there not too long ago. Like I said, I tend to find that for some reason the front is usually the colder spot. But I'll go down and I'll poke a... A poke a hole. Yeah, now this is way hot. I mean, yeah, this is like, this is as hot as it gets. So there's like 212 right there. So, and that was down. So I'm a little bit beyond my, my two inches. And I'll go down. I, I'll tell you right now, my experience says that, like, if it's at 212, it's probably been at that for a while um, but like yeah if I if I just realize the temperature I would let it go for 20 minutes and then that would be like no weeds that would be definitely done um, it's uh, I like it because it's easy I mean we talked about it for quite a while but it's actually a pretty simple idea we you know we're just pasteurizing soil that's what we're doing you get, let you guys see the soil a little bit at least from this end you pull this back, that the steam sock is hot. And going to grab that steam sock is like I mean it is not it's not easy to grab the steam sock and move it. So if you had a second steam sock and a second unit and it all set, then you could turn on, you could th put this back, let it cool and everything, then get this set back where you would want it. And the whole time, yeah, you're running. You have run time happening. So this transfer, the fastest I can do it is 20 minutes, but I'm burning myself and going hot potato, hot potato the whole time because the, um, the sock is, is hot. And when you have to flip the sock, that's the roughest part about it is flipping the sock to the next set, right? And so if you can let it cool a bit longer, take your time a little bit in, in moving it, then it wouldn't be such a big deal to move it over. And then when you had it moved and set all down, you look at your timer, you're like, oh, I only have another hour to go before I need to switch it. And then, you know, you can do another task, come back, switch, and, and, let, it, and let it run. We hope you learned something here today. If you'd like to learn more, check out the videos over here. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a beat. Thanks for watching.